Wisconsin's Green Bay is a walleye fishing destination second to none. That goes double for the early spring when countless walleye make their way into many tributary spawning streams that pour into Green Bay's western shoreline. Anglers seeking fast action converge near these river mouths with fishing rods in hand, casting bucktail jigs, jigs dressed with plastic swim baits, and lipless crankbaits all catch fish consistently. When you fish Green Bay in the spring, you never know if your next bite will be a two-pounder or the fish of a lifetime. There you go, Dad. I think this fish might be frozen, man. We have been dealing with a cold, cold morning here in Wisconsin. That's a good fish, though. Finally got one to go. Nice size fish, Dad. Just there you go. Got him. Got him. Got him. Nice. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, my fingertips are so cold, I almost don't even want to hold on to them. And I love holding on to walleye, man. That is a good one right there. And kind of the focus of this entire show, I think, is going to be just using your electronics, driving around and finding these pods of fish, and then having the confidence of setting your boat up, making the right casts, and getting these fish to bite. But it's springtime, kind of in that post-spawn time frame, and hopefully put our hands on a bunch of these ones right here, because it's a beautiful Green Bay walleye. And we are hooked up, Jakers. Got one on there, Dad? Yep. Still kind of with the uh, the jib program here, but uh, this one ain't a paddle tail. Oh man, this is fun. I tell you what, this is a ride to see these fish. Look at the colors on that fish. Oh Very cool. my word. Oh my word, oh my word, oh my word. If there's any doubt that this fish wanted this one, look at that. That grub is literally right down his throat. I tied on a, a thing called a boxing glove jig. It's uh, made by Eagle Claw. I like them because they got troll car hooks on them. And, uh, and put a paddle tail on there and made two casts, thunk. And I mean, no question that that fish was all over it. Man, look at the colors on these Green Bay fish. I don't think you can beat it anywhere. Absolutely gorgeous fish. 
Well, this week's episode was filmed on the Bay of Green Bay. We fished near the town of Peshtico. In the springtime, there's a great post-spawn walleye bite here. Between Peshtico and El Canto, you're gonna find lots and lots of walleyes for the guy who's looking for that post-spawn bite. Oh. Look at that, Good Jake. fish, Dad. Woo! That looks like a good looking fish. Oh yeah, he is fighting too, man. Wow. Man, here we go, Dad. He's not quite ready, ready but close. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Beautiful. Very, very nice. One of the coolest things in the world that we're living in right now is just the advancements of technology. And if you don't fight the technology, it's here to help you. And tell you what's helping us catch more fish, we get a lot of questions all the time. With all the talk of live sonar, and is it worth the money? And there's a lot of different brands of this live sonar out now. Basically all three of the major electronics companies have a live style of sonar. But I tell you what, I literally watched that fish. I saw three or four of them out in front of me. I pulled this jig through them, and as soon as I watched the jig go through those fish, thunk, there he was. I mean, there was no question I was gonna get bit. I was basically calling my shots on this fish right here. So don't fight the new technology. It's here to help us, and it's putting a pile of fish in the boat for us. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems, your fishing equipment experts. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sets. Absolutely railed it. <laughs> oh, that's a good one there, Jake. I don't know if you're even going to see this jig in this fish's mouth, Dad. He's got it so deep. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh man, I had my hands full of getting him in the net. He wasn't exactly cooperating. Whew. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. That's a beautiful Green Bay walleye. Take a look at this. Somewhere in that mouth, there's a jig in the back of that throat. <laughs> you know, the cool thing about this show is that we came out here with the mindset that we were gonna be casting lipless baits. Had a huge cold front this morning. It was 26 degrees when we woke up. The entire boat was covered in frost. And we started casting these lipless baits and you know, we caught fish, but what we were seeing on our live sonar is fish following it back to the boat, but just not committing. So then we became fishermen and we started throwing different stuff. Started throwing hair jigs, started throwing swim baits. This is a, a split tail plastic. But we've kind of had to go to a little bit more of a subtle presentation than what the lipless crankbait is to get these fish to go. That's not to say as the day warms up and these fish get more aggressive, they won't go back to a lipless bait, but you have to adapt as a fisherman. That's what it's all about. The conditions changed, so we changed with it. I guess one of the tips that I would talk about with jig casting is we always like to make these long casts because we want to reach out and cover as much water as possible. But this fish literally bit underneath the boat. I mean, it was right at the very end, and so the tip the tip is this, go ahead and make that long cast and work it all the way back and when you get it back to the boat, give it a couple of hops before you reel it in and make another cast. I'm confident that that fish was just following and when all of a sudden it realized that it was getting away, that's when he finally bit. So work that cast from the very end all the way back to the boat and you'll be successful as a jig fisherman. <laughs> and good looking fish right there. And I think this is pretty typical of what you could expect. Lots and lots of these males in this 20 to 22 inch range. I think you're gonna see lots of these when you come to the Bay of Green Bay. So we're heading up to make another drift right now over top of these fish. And one of the things that we've spent a lot of time today is looking for the right fish. And basically what I'm doing is I'm driving around and here on my hummingbird, the most important tool to this entire thing has been my side imaging. And the reason that's so important is because we're fishing relatively shallow water. I need to see what these fish are out to the side. The fish that are right under the boat kind of dissipate before the boat ever really goes over top of them. So the side imaging is very important. And then what I've been doing is just driving around at three to four miles an hour, looking at my graph, staring at it, and looking for these pods of fish. Now that we've actually found them, we've turned the boat sideways and we're drifting over top of these pods of fish. So right now I'm going back over top and then we're gonna drift right back down on top of them again. So there's a lot of water out here on Green Bay that just simply doesn't have any fish. What you wanna do is just eliminate that water by trusting your sonar, looking at your screen. Once you see what you're looking for, set up on those fish and capitalize on those bites. Oh, it's better to be lucky than good. You gotta love <laughs> post-spawn walleye because they, they are very hungry this time of year, aren't they? Oh my goodness. And uh, yeah, you can say that again. When I get him out of here, you'll see just how much he chunked it. He definitely got it right down the throat. But uh, 
somewhere in that mouth there's a there's a jig i promise you there's a jig that fish bit it i missed him right back down bit it again missed him a second time and uh and luckily for me he bit a third time what a beautiful thing <laughs> i love it i absolutely love catching these fish on jigs Jake just noticed something I didn't realize until after Jake pointed out, but this fish has a spaghetti tag in it right here by the dorsal fin. That's a, you know, a DNR tag. I'm not sure. I can't see the numbers on it. It's all covered in algae right now, but uh, uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, normally we associate tags with jaw tags with walleyes, but this one actually has a spaghetti tag in it. Before I make another cast, we need to reference another important piece of equipment that you need to have for this style of fishing. This morning we had a very light and variable wind, nearly a perfect drift for fishing jigs. But as the day has progressed, the wind has picked up, and now the boat is drifting faster than we want. So in order to maximize our time on the fish, we've dropped a sea bag in. We started with one bag, that wasn't enough, we put a second sea bag in, and now we've got our drift down to a slow speed, which is ideal for jig fishing. Without those sea bags, we'd be in a bad way right now. <laughs> That's so cool. Literally, I was marking that fish about midway into the, on this live sonar. I cast it out there. I actually reeled up really quick and cast, made it like a half cast towards that mark. As soon as it hit the bottom, boom, there he was. This feels like a pretty good fish, Dad. It's kind of like oh, a yeah. boat here. That's It'd a big tough one. To get at him. That's oh, a big yeah. one. That's, a, that's more like what we're hoping to see here. Oh, get in there, get in there. <laughs> Woo, baby. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to show this one off. This one right here is the reason why you go to the Bay of Green Bay in the springtime. You know, there's a lot of good times a year to target walleye on Green Bay. But if you're looking at that post-spawn time frame, what you're dealing with is just a ton of very hungry fish. You know, we're from Michigan, we drive to Wisconsin, and it's my hope is to put my hands on fish just like this one right here. Such a great fish. Special considerations are provided by the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association and by Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepare. Special considerations are provided by Fish Hawk Electronics. Fishing without a fish hawk is called boating. Yeah, baby, look at that. Woo! Travelite Truck Campers presents the 411 on fishing. You know, at Fishing 401, we do a lot of trolling, a lot of trolling. For many years now, we've been using Cisco Fishing System rod holders. And what we like about them is they have a rod holder for every single application that you could possibly imagine for trolling. And uh, we'll take a second here and we'll go over the ways that we use their rod holders we think makes the most sense. I'm standing next to their rod holder tree and I really like this product. Um, the reason I like it is because we spend a lot of time pulling things like inline planer boards, the offshore boards. Anytime we have inline planer boards in the water, whether we're walleye fishing, salmon fishing, doesn't matter, we're gonna use a tree. And the reason we're gonna use a tree is because you can see that it gets your rods up off the deck, allows you to space out your rod tips a little bit further so you don't have to worry about planer board lines ever crossing, so that's never an issue. And the butts are on the outside of the boat, so you've got nothing to impede on the inside of the boat. So if you're a guy that likes to fish inline planer boards, you just cannot beat trees. But there's other ways to troll. Let me move back here a little bit. The other common rod holder, and these have been around forever, is what I describe as rod tubes. Now a rod tube, I will give it the designation of being an all-purpose rod holder. The reason I call it the all-purpose rod holder is because it can be used for planer board trolling. It can be used for mass planer board use. It can be used for downriggers. It can be used for dipsy divers. It can be used for virtually every type of trolling a guy wants to do. So if you want to keep things simple on your boat and you only want to have one style of rod holder, a tube is what you're going to go with. Tubes can be adjusted so they go this way and they can also be adjusted so they pivot this way as well. So a tube rod holder, super versatile. But there is one more rod holder I want to talk about. When we come back here to the back, this is what I call a cradle rod holder. And the reason I like cradles is because this is where I'm going to fish anything that goes straight out the back of the boat. For example, a bottom bouncer and spinner for walleyes. I use cradle rod holders. If I'm pulling dipsy divers for things like trout and salmon, I'm going to use a cradle rod holder. And the reason I like a cradle is because I can reach down and grab that rod when it's got a fish on it, and I can lift it straight out nice and easy, and I'm putting pressure against that fish 
essentially setting the hook as I take the rod out of the rod holder. So a cradle rod holder works great anytime you're fishing something out the back of the boat. A tube holder is gonna work for just about everything you could possibly imagine for trolling. And if you like inline planer boards, I come back up here again, you just can't beat trees. If you're looking for the best rod holders in the business, check out Cisco Fishing Systems. You'll be glad you did. Let's take a second and talk about the cadence that's been working really well for us today with these jigs. You know, my dad and I are actually throwing two different styles of jigs. He's throwing more of a traditional swim bait style jig, and I'm actually throwing a teardrop style jig. Both of them are Eagle Claw products, and they're both really good jigs. Uh, but the way that I've been working this jig is I've been kind of letting the fish tell me what the cadence is. Now, if the fish are acting lethargic, I slow my presentation down. But as of right now, these fish are absolutely chewing it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a long cast, cast that jig out there as far as I can cast it, and I'm going to let that jig hit the bottom. We're only fishing about 10 feet of water, but I'm using a half ounce jig, which is super heavy for this depth of water. Now what I'm doing is I basically reel up tight until that jig is tight to the line, and I give that jig a hard pop. What it's doing is coming straight up and falling straight down. Then I reel the slack up. Again, hard pop, bring that jig straight up and straight down. And these fish seem to be pretty aggressive right now. And so that aggressive action, by working the jig that aggressively, seems to really go with the bite. Now, what's happening is I basically pop that jig up and it falls on slack line. Then when I reel back up to give it another pop, that fish is there and that fish is biting it on the fall. So I think the most important thing to talk about here is that just really look at the attitude of the fish. If these fish are aggressive, be aggressive with your cadence. And if these fish start to get more lethargic, slow your cadence down. He just pile drive it. I'm trying to keep your head down in the water there. Man, that's a good looking fish. That is a good looking fish. They've all can, kind of been good looking fish today though. Let's see, let's see one for you there, Dad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now that's a little bit nicer. That's what I'm talking about right there. One of the nice things about what we're doing today is the rod and reel combos that we're using in the line is identical for both the presentation. So if we're throwing a jig or if we're throwing a lipless crankbait, the same rod and reels work perfect for that. Um, a seven foot medium or medium light action rod to a seven and a half foot medium light action rod is gonna be ideal. You're gonna wanna have a relatively light spinning reel, in this case a 25 class spinning reel. And we're going with 10 pound test braid as our main line. And then we're terminating that braided line to a fluorocarbon leader about three or four foot of 10 pound test fluorocarbon and that's what we're tying directly to our jig or directly to our lipless bait. So the same rod can be used for throwing the lipless baits as it is can be used for throwing the jigs. Special considerations provided by Abyss Battery. Power your pursuit. Special considerations are provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. You know, we've been using a few different presentations to catch these fish out here on Green Bay, which is something you're going to want to bring with you in your boat when you come out here to fish, because there's no right presentation. Every day is a little bit different. One of the things we dealt with today is a super, super cold front type conditions. We had hard frost this morning. When we got out on the water, everything was coated in frost. And the weather has warmed up and the sun has come out and the fish have been really biting well here as of late. But when it started off, we were throwing these lipless baits. Now a lipless crankbait right here is very popular on Green Bay. It's got a lot of rattle, a lot of vibration. This rattle trap right here does a great job of catching fish. But if the fish are a little bit neutral, and so then you can bring some other things into the play and that's exactly what we've had to do today something like a hair jig here's just a good old-fashioned hair jig I love throwing hair jigs and it's worked well for us today the other thing that we've done really well on is just a good old-fashioned lead head jig and a, and a piece of plastic jigs and plastics hair jigs lipless baits they all work out here on Green Bay and you definitely want to have all of them in your boat when you come out here there you go <laughs> Nothing like calling your shots. I literally, I saw that fish on live. Oh, that's a nice fish, Dad. It is a nice fish. Looks like I saw that on fish the scene, on huh? the Mega Live. Oh, come on, baby, stay licked. I knew that fish was came up just a little funny. Oh, that's a beautiful that's a, fish right there, a good Jake. fish, though. They're all going back today anyways. That's another really good Green Bay walleye. You see, 
you know, the stinger's in his mouth, but the hook kind of came around and caught him a little funny. But that's a really good fish. And there's literally, we are calling our shots at this point. I made a joke, I saw a fish on live, and I said, I gotta get my hook set stance ready. Because I marked that fish on live and I knew that fish was gonna bite. About two seconds later, thunk, there he was, set the hook on him. So that's the nice thing about post spawn is that these fish are hungry. They've done the spawn now, now they gotta pack some weight back on and that's exactly what they're doing. You know, a lot of our fishing success today has come from our forward facing live sonar. Let's <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your interview there, Jake. That's okay. It's always good to be in interrupted by a fish. This is a solid fish here too, so. If I'd been polite, I would have just put my rod down and let Jake do his interview, but uh, I'm not that polite. <laughs> Thank you, son. <laughs> like Jake says, see fish, catch fish, and that has been the story of our day. Oh, man, are they fun. Absolutely beautiful fish. Yeah, this is a pretty good one right here if you want to grab the net. Um, you bet you, buddy. Oh, hold on here. Let me swing them around to you. Hey, that's a good fish. Yeah, that's a nice, nice fish. Very nice fish. Yeah, let's pull that fish up and show them off. That is a gorgeous Green Bay walleye. That's exactly why we spent the whole day out here to put our hands on a fish like this one right here. Hey, my name is Jake Romanek. On behalf of my dad and myself, I'd like to thank you for t coming out here and letting us show you how to catch a bunch of walleye using side imaging and live sonar out here on Green Bay. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. Closed captioning is provided by Precision Trolling Data. Fishing 411 TV is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Starcraft Marine, Suzuki Marine, J Sporting Goods, Smooth Move Seats, Niagara Falls, USA, Eagle Claw, Bill Lewis, and Yakima Bait Company. Here we go. Woo! Start over. Here we go. That's what we're looking for right there. That's a beautiful Green Bay walleye. Take a look at this. Somewhere in that mouth, there's a jig in the back of that throat.